there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Good morning. Somewhere around here, uh, the Aston Road in Birmingham, in 1924, a trap called McNamara opened uh, at number 207 Aston Road, a small workshop for making wireless components. Radio broadcasting began in the UK officially on the 1st of January 1923 and there was, uh, everybody wanted a radio, they were very expensive to buy but if you bought the components and made your own they turned out a lot cheaper because there was no royalty to pay to the BBC, which was then the British Broadcasting Company, not the corporation. So this guy McNamara began to make coils, capacitors and things like that. And because it was a boom time, everybody wanted a radio, even if it was only a modest crystal set. Um, so he did very well. And pretty soon, the, the shed or whatever he had here wasn't big enough for him. Well, McNamara moved just a few hundred yards here to uh, Miller Street, number 56, where he found uh, a derelict factory that was up for rent and he moved into that and began to expand. But the business was doing so well that he knew this new place wasn't going to be big enough. Um, incidentally, the name of his company was Telson, T-E-L-S-E-N. And I'm not sure what that stands for, it must stand for something, but uh, the fact is, by the mid-late 1920s, he was doing very well indeed. Well, McNamara either had or raised an enormous amount of capital because he built this. Here's the main entrance, and look at the lintel, electric flashes. It's a real Art Deco design on that lintel there, certainly. Well, here we are at Telson, and um, the subsequent company history uh, didn't last very long and it was a little bit unfortunate because with the Wall Street crash, uh, the great expansion that the company had done, um, it still continued to sell lots of, of stuff, including complete radios and all sorts of other things, but the, the depression of the 1930s, which lasted well into the mid-1930s, uh, also McNamara began to suffer from ill health and he put the company into liquidation and it was bought up um, and taken to Manchester. Uh, but the reason we're here on a rather cold um, Sunday morning in February 2018 is because we have one piece of equipment made here at the Telson Works and uh, we'll demonstrate it to you when we get home. This foundation stone in the doorway uh, is a good example of if you want to find uh, something out about a building you really do have to go and look at it uh, because there are dates for this factory between 1928 or 1930 uh, but by reading the stone we can see that it was finished in 32 which means it was built in stages um, so that's great that's a, it's still a big undertaking though and incidentally the factory is now in use still in use for small businesses starting up uh, a flatted factory so the building still serves a vital purpose well we're back home now we can see what's happening and i can tell you that the device we're going to be looking at is an um, electric pickup uh, made by telson and it including an arm it's actually got its own arm it's an integrated unit um, they put it on the market in the early 1930s and uh, we'll look at it very soon uh, but the story of it actually begins in 1930. In the 1920s and 1930s there were many uh, radio wireless magazines and uh, some of them weekly such as this one which is the wireless and gramophone trader well that's a trade paper of course and here's an article of July 1930 some recent patents and if we scroll down the right hand look at the right hand column we can see that Burndept, the Burndept company have introduced a needle armature pickup Patent number 32493, 
And if we go a bit further, it tells us this is this high quality they're claiming is brought about by an arrangement which utilises the stylus or needle itself as the armature whose vibration serves to set up the flux variation needed to induce the electrical impulses. So it's a new pickup and the needle itself is the armature. If we scroll down, there's a diagram here which shows um, a horseshoe magnet and then here's I'm going across with a coil and the needle goes, here's the needle, it goes up through the coil and is screwed down there. So this pickup is totally different to all the usual sorts of electromagnetic pickup at the time uh, because uh, the needle screw is above the coil instead of being below. P indicates the pole pieces um, and it's secured to the horseshoe magnet by a little bush there. Um, now let's fade out of this and fade into something else. And lo, here is the thing uh, in the flesh as it were. Um, this is the front of the Telson pickup. Uh, P uh, it points out to the uh, pole pieces, still NS needle screw, which is above the coil. And I must say that the coil has been, been wound very badly uh, because it was open circuit and I've rewound it, but not very well. Um, but here is the thing uh, true to life. Well, it's nice to see a black and white drawing uh, come to life. Um, and obviously Telson hadn't nicked it. You know, they hadn't copied the design. They've obviously either bought the patent from Burndept uh, or uh, bought a license to, to make it themselves. Um, so it's high time we took a look at the actual arm itself. Telson themselves produced six magazines uh, at irregular intervals and they're not datable and not, not easily datable uh, but of course they included adverts for all their own parts and they published circuits for radios and what's interesting about this is you can see the arm in very very good condition because ours is dead ropey you can see how much it costs 32 and sixpence one pound 12 and sixpence that's that's a you know it's expensive I don't know what an average weekly wage was in 1932, but it was probably two pounds. Or if you're on, certainly if you're on three pounds a week, you were doing very well. But the best thing of all is the BBC have evidently started using it, so that would be a big Philip for Telson. And um, so you know that was they were doing uh, really great at that time. Here we are then, our old uh, trusty HMV workhorse, the Model 60 from 1923, the Telson arm mounted there. And um, there's one interesting thing about it, you must see it from the front. Here's the front of the head and see how curious it is with the needle screw um, halfway up the head. It does look odd, doesn't it? And this isn't the original screw that was missing. And so one of these two screws that holds the head together, one of those was missing too. And I can't match the original one. Um, but there's one other odd thing that we must look at before we actually kick off. You won't get very far if you use a standard length needle like the one on the left <clears throat> because it goes so far up uh, through into the head uh, that the bottom of the pickup will foul the, dip, the record because the whole head is tilted to the playing angle. You have to use a rather longer needle such as the one on the right. They're very common in the UK, the Sangster Bronze they're called. They're actually steel inside but coated uh, and so those are the ones to use. If you use a shorter needle when you try to get it out there's nothing to take hold of. Uh, first change the needle the head does turn over to enable you to do that so we take out the old, the old one and even a long one is quite hard to get hold of and then we'll uh, put in another one making, making sure it does locate right up to the top which it has do it up and turn it back and at last we're ready to go it's a British Decker of Adrian Rolini New York 1933 hustling and bustling for baby and the sound you'll hear of course is not through the camera we'll record it onto the PC and sync it so thanks for watching oh it, it does help to wind the machine up And the pivot's broken as well. 
I told you it wasn't in very good condition. With a rooster each morning, pushing my way through the dew, just hustling and bustling for baby, making her dreams come true. Lots of things make me unhappy, but what do I care if they do? I'm hustling and bustling for baby, making her dreams come true. She'd like to have a little cottage by a brook beside a hill, and I'm so much in love with her. I'm mighty sure that she will, so I'm up with a rooster each morning, pushing my way through the dew, just hustling and bustling for baby, making a dream come true. 